everybody. I'm Jerry Willis. Tonight, no progress on the fiscal cliff as Democrats and Republicans trade barbs over the issue. But one group of Americans that is finding a way through this, regardless of Congress and the president, small business owners in this country are preparing to hire. Joining me now, Nigel Galt, chief U.S. economist for IHS Global Insight, Mike Whalen, Heart of America Group founder and right. member of the Jobs Creation Alliance and actual job creators in this country who say their voice is not being heard in this whole fiscal cliff debate. And also with us from the Weekly Standard, Stephen Hayes. Welcome to you all. Great to have you here. I want to start with uh, right. the conversation in Washington, Stephen Hayes, and what John Boehner had to say uh, about the status of the fiscal cliff. Here's Mr. Boehner. Well, this isn't a progress report because there's no progress uh, to report. Uh, when it comes to the fifth fiscal cliff uh, that's threatening our economy and threatening jobs, uh, the White House has wasted another week. So what do you say about that, Stephen? We've wasted another week. We seem to be getting nowhere at all. And now folks are saying the president is trying to entice us over the fiscal cliff. Do you believe that? Well, look, I think there are actually some pretty strong incentives for the president to take the country over the fiscal cliff. I mean, the, I think if you, if you look at what the president stands to gain if the country goes over the fiscal cliff, I think there are very clear and identifiable things. On the one hand, the president could identify himself as a tax cutter. He could say, in the, if it were on January 1st, the president could, could turn to the country and say, look, I am now in favor of cutting all of these taxes that have been raised because we didn't solve this before the fiscal cliff. He can turn and say, I want to restore some of the defense funding that my Secretary of Defense mm -hmm. and my Joint Chiefs of Staff have told me I need to, to restore and can position himself as sort of the protector of U.S. national security. So there are some clear incentives, I think, for the president to let the country go over the fiscal cliff. Do I think that's what he wants? Probably not, but do I think that there are incentives for him to do it? Yeah, sure, I think oh, there are. Never looked at it that way, Stephen. Nigel, to you, as you look at this debate ongoing, there are a lot of folks out there that say we will be flirting with a recession or in recession if we do go over the cliff. Do you agree? That happens only if we go off the cliff and stay off for an extended period of time. We don't go into recession just because we don't have a resolution on January the 1st. It's a question of whether we have no resolution at that time, but it seems that it's still likely to be a resolution within a short period. The longer we go into January with no resolution, the more likely that we do go off the cliff into recession. But if it's a few days, that doesn't take us into recession. Well, I, I think the broader concern is if we can find any common ground. Uh, Mike Whalen, to you, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah. Uh, only moments ago, hi, Jerry. hi, I was speaking to a fella whose business is buying and smell, selling small businesses, and he told me that all year long, small business owners out there seeing the fiscal cliff in front of them have been saying, I'm ready to sell my business. Have you seen that? Have you even thought of doing that? Well, I just talked to a friend of mine today, and he said, what, why would anybody in America who's been successful continue to do it? You know, on January 1st, if my wife and I get hit by a bus, the government thinks they're entitled to 55%, basically, of everything I've made. Here's, here's one hotel that I own that's worth about $20 million. Apparently, passing that on to my children on January 1st wow. with the fiscal cliff is some kind of threat to the republic. I think it's a threat to being in the land of the free myself. Well, and as you're implying here, the taxes, the death tax soars after January 1 if nothing happens. Oh. Monster. Monster. A absolutely frightening to a lot of people out there. Stephen, to you, you can see how people are reacting in the heartland to this. And uh, we're seeing reports every single day about people who are now upping the ante to charity right. in this month because they're, they're worried that their charitable donation will be worth less. Companies, uh, they're paying dividends like you have not right. seen in December. Uh, it seems to me that the rest of the world is ahead of Congress. Washington is in the rearview seat and everybody <laughs> else is getting ahead of them. What do you say? Right. Well, I say that's like every other day in America where the rest of the world is ahead of Congress. I mean, this is, this is sort of how we <laughs> how operate, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, look, I, I think that's right. I mean, I, I think what we're seeing in public is a little bit different from what we're seeing in private. I think what, what you're likely to see is Republicans agree to some kind of decoupling of the tax rate issue, whether they do it by this proposal that's been floated that they vote present and sort of let the, the president and mm, Democrats right. own the issue, or whether they free up, whether John Boehner frees up members of Congress to vote for some kind of a compromise that would include a, a rise in rates on the wealthy. I don't know exactly what the mechanism is like to be, but I think you've got that negotiation taking place on the one hand. And then on the other hand, you've got negotiations sort of on all of the rest of this stuff, which I think is likely to be lumped into some kind of an omnibus bill or hmm. agreement or series of bills at the end of the year, struck at the last minute to sort of bail us out of this issue. It's likely to include a bunch of really uh, unattractive add-ons, last-minute slapdash type things, and it'll be the kind of, uh, of, of agreement, the kind of negotiation that leaves the rest of America, the heartland, as you say, even more disaffected with the way that Washington right. is doing That's business. Right. And this looks like the way that Washington is going to be doing business from here forward. Well, and Mike, to you, you know, you watch this, and you must, it, you must be disbelieving right. the length of time these things take, but I'm sure you do things in a heartbeat. Today we got very important jobs numbers, and the jobs rate came right. down to 7.7 percent, pretty impressive. But what was astonishing about that report was not that number or even the one below it. It was the number of people who are, not, who are out of the workforce, not looking for a job, the disaffected, the people who don't want to look, some 350,000 folks 